you should look for it. Just follow the road. Straight. Perfectly straight. Okay. Manual mode. We hit a log. So this might not be the best driving mode. It's not the best auto driver in the world. Okay, let, let me try something. Is it recording? Mm -hmm. Recording an automatic driving system. Mind you, this is a used truck and we are we are 13 years old. 1983 Dodge Ram. And it's driving itself. No, it's not possessed, like from that those trucks movies or Maximum Overdriver, Christine. It's being controlled by a computer, and no, this isn't the Terminator films either. And yes, that's a horse running in front of us. Yeah, we're out of ranch. Because that's the only place we have enough room to drive. And this auto-drive thing probably wouldn't be legal on streets. I wonder if but yeah, could get a driver's license. Who knows? I wonder if Kit had one. <laughs> Kit from Night Rider. Well, as it detects, we've told it um, what route we usually take, but we've uh, ran it into some obstacles, so it has to avoid those obstacles automatically without any information from the GPS. It's equipped with radar and a motor to spin the wheel, and the speed I'm controlling that. Eventually, we'll get a servo installed on the brake pedal to control the speed and to keep it constant, slowing if an obstacle is unavoidable. As fast as the steering thing can go, we have to keep it at idle speed or lower. And and if we do install a servo, we'll have to keep the horses out. Yeah. Because otherwise it might not be able to avoid them. Unless we can get something that can detect from all sides and identify them and s decide what to do on its own. Right Which now we're take. avoiding a log and steering to resume course. Sometimes it doesn't always avoid really low things because it can normally run over them, but things that are like the big logs, it can't go over them. And it's not high enough to be detected. And right now it's having some trouble steering, so I'm going to go nice and slow. And it's got a weak motor. And we're getting tighter and tighter around this curve. Avoid that horse there. Oh, bump. Well, it didn't detect that, apparently. Well, that's a low spot, so that's why I probably didn't detect it. We might have to install some ground to the ground and avoid that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you that saw the DARPA Grand Challenge, you might recall a van called Alice that was driving along at about 30 miles an hour and very abruptly decided that the best route was through a series of concrete barriers. <laughs> well, hopefully that isn't us. Yes, if anything goes wrong, we'll have a nice big stop button. Well, currently we're the ones controlling the brake and we're always going to be in the car. I'll avoid those horses. Right now, DJ's foot is on the brake, controlling the speed. The motor is controlling the steering. We just have a motor around the steering column that is hooked up to a series of sensors on the perimeter of the vehicle. And we have a, a laptop computer and an old desktop processor hooked up to provide optimal computing power for keeping the vehicle on track. Which is sitting right in the middle between the two seats in this thing. Which is it's buried under the seat so we can't dig it out to show you, but we would. Now, someday we're going to hook up a sensor to the hitch ball so that this vehicle could back up a trailer into somewhere for persons who did not want to or could not back up. We're also going to try to add that Lexus parallel parking system. Yes, and then this truck might be truly autonomous. So that way it can park itself because currently we're having to drive it in because it has no idea what to do. It just wants to keep backing up until it sees an obstacle and then it avoids it. Yes, so we spent about half an hour in a parking lot once. <laughs> Trying to get it to park itself. It didn't work. 
Alright, and that's our automatic driving pickup. We hope you enjoyed it.